And when they charge you just as much for the same size bag of potato chips, only has a hell of a lot fewer chips in it. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who did notice, the cookie monster. <laughs> he pointed out cookies are, his cookies are getting smaller, paying the same price. <laughs> I was stunned when I found out that's what actually happened. He's talking about missing chips, the cookie monster. Even Democrats' most loyal voters, ride or die, have had it with this cornball. I think of President Biden, he kind of sold a dream that he couldn't accomplish. His famous quote was that for African American, you weren't black if you weren't, didn't vote for Joe Biden. Now, the Biden alliance, consisting of politically correct sheep with coastal degrees, federal bureaucrats, the deep state, androids in big tech, and the media tribe, whose greatest fear is social banishment, are going to run this election like a military campaign. Right now, as we speak, Washington is erecting a fence around the Capitol in anticipation of Biden's State of the Union tomorrow. Not a fence around the border, a fence around Biden, who thinks he needs protection from you while he doesn't provide protection from them. Now, this fence is a sinister symbol to stigmatize half the country's dangerous to justify his crackdown. Even though we outnumber them, they're powerful and will overwhelm you with shame from now until November. They'll call you names, treat you like ogres, threaten you, threaten your job, your family, your status. This will be an all-out war by Biden's alliance against the American people in the name of saving democracy, which is the most cynical part of this. They'll try to separate you from your senses, your instincts, from your conscience. You know what's right and wrong, but they'll get in between you and your heart, and they'll make you doubt it. This election will not be about policy. That's the last thing they want it to be. It'll be a blood sport, the ugliest campaign in American history. Now, usually it's the politician who gets destroyed, but now they're targeting you. So prepare yourself and stay strong. Presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joins me now. So the president of the United States has opened the border. There's over 10 million, he calls them newcomers in this country. They're raping children. One of them just murdered an American girl in Georgia. Is the president a national security threat? Well, you know, it was dismaying to see uh, those hosts on MSNBC, Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow and Jim Psaki ridiculing middle-class Americans who are concerned about what's happening at the border. What's happening at the border would be unsustainable for and unacceptable to any country in the world. We're watching, and, and it's not racist to say that the Mexican drug cartel should not be controlling <laughs> U.S. border policy. Right. I've been down there twice, and it is absolutely horrendous. There's seven million people who've walked across the border and gotten free plane tickets, many of them, any destination they want. And as you pointed out, Mayor Adams in New York City has said this is an existential threat to New York City. He was not exaggerating. New York City had to cut its police budget by 5 percent, its sanitation budget for 5 percent, its education and health care budgets by 5 percent in order to pay for the, this influx of immigrants that have come into the city. There are now encampments at Randall's Island, which are on the on the playing fields for New York's public schools. So for two and a half years during COVID, these kids, many of them on scholarship trajectory, could not play their sports. And it, and it ruined, many of them, it ruined their hopes for a certain kind of life. And today they can't play again because there's illegal immigrants encamped on the street. And now the immigrants are being preyed upon. It's a humanitarian crisis for them as well. I saw it at the border. They've been exploited, extorted. Many of them have been raped, robbed, brutalized by the cartels before they come across. They come here and they can't legally work, so they're, uh, they're preyed upon by unscrupulous employers who play them, pay them eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars an hour. There's contractors in New York that are hiring them for those, and then they're bidding against union shops 
four jobs. So it's hurting everybody. It's crushing it, it's everybody. It our really, country. It's, it's crushing yeah, the it's, safety of the streets. It's crushing bank accounts. It, it's kind of crushing just the overall fabric of the society when you overwhelm cities to this magnitude. People are panicking, RFK Jr., that you're going to steal votes from them. I don't know what the game plan is, what, what states you're going to be on. If you're going to be on every battleground state, what does that look like to you? But Jesse, I'll be on the ballot in every state and the District of Columbia. I mean, that's a oh, huge, I'm going to be competing. huge already, amount of voters that are going to be I'm able already, to vote for you. Yeah, well, I'm already beating both President Trump and President Biden among independents, which is the largest cohort. Now, independents are now 52 percent of the American voting public. This is the first election in history where independents have outnumbered Republicans and Democrats. I'm beating both President Biden and President Trump in young people, and people under 35 in the battleground states against uh, among all people under 45. I'm tying President Biden with Hispanic voters and beating President Trump by 10 points. Oh, all of the, the only cohort where I'm, I'm losing on are baby boomers, and when we start reaching them with advertising, we're going to bring them around, too. All right. And I'm sure you're going to mention the website, because that would help with the advertising. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Kennedy24.com. <laughs> oh, God. I've been, been down this road before. Thank you, RFK Jr. Good luck.